Hi guys, I am organizing in the warehouse and while I organize, I wanna to talk to you guys about some tips and tricks for your balloon business. So let's get to it. These are random, but they are critical. So please take note. Okay, so one time, let me tell you a story. It's story time, guys. So one time I went to a corporate building in DC and they had very beautiful, it was like either marble or granite floors. And I was like, yes, I'm so excited to take pictures because it's such a beautiful space. And I went and set up my balloon garland on their side and I used my balloon shine. And after I did everything, I looked down and I saw all of these droplets of balloon shine on their floor. I stained their floor. I was so scared, guys, oh, my gosh, like I was devastated. I was like, I was calling my mom, dad, brother, sister, blah, 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 uncle, everybody like, oh my gosh, I stained the floor. How do I get this up? I was looking on Google. I called the custodian that was in the building and unfortunately we could not get it up. Like I was so sad. I just knew that they were gonna sue me. So guys, luckily they understood and they took care of it for me. But I don't want the same for you guys. So when you're using balloon shine, use a bucket to actually spray your cloth or spray it inside of a bag. Just make sure that the droplets do not land on your client's floor. Which leads me to my next point, getting a COI. So that is a certificate of insurance. So if you go to a building, and you spill balloon shine on their floor, or if a balloon that you have escapes to their ceiling and it hits some lights or something like that, you have insurance to cover those accidents that do happen. So reach out to a local insurance provider and make sure that you have a certificate of insurance when you're working with venues, when you're working with large corporations, a lot of them are gonna ask if you have a COI and you're gonna be like, actually I did get one because Brittany told me I would need it. Next, do not commit to a long-term lease. Don't commit to a two-year lease. Don't commit to a three-year lease because it's risky when you start a business. Any business, it's a risk. So you don't wanna have this commitment to paying rent and you're not making any money from your business yet. So to start, start off at home, rent a storage, start off at a friend's warehouse, um, see where you can get like the cheapest place with the lowest commitment in terms of renting that area. Eventually, you are gonna need a space. If you can find one, you're gonna look for a six month lease or you're gonna look for a month to month lease within your first two years of starting your balloon business. Balloons, don't go crazy with ordering a lot of balloons and having a crazy inventory that is not being used. Balloons are expensive. It's gonna be a waste of money. So you wanna make sure that you order balloons for your next month out. That way your balloons are in, you have everything you need, you're not rushing to order, and then you're not also spending unnecessary money. Get QuickBooks or any other type of financial platform that will help you organize your business finances. So you need to know if you're making money, you need to know where you're spending your money. And a software similar to QuickBooks will show you all the details in terms of where you're spending your money because it's gonna be connected to all of your accounts, your bank accounts, which Brings me to another thing. You need to make sure you have a business account. Separate your business finances and your personal finances. If ever you need to use some of your business finances, you need to transfer your money from your business account into your personal account so that it can be an owner's expense at the, at the end of the year when it comes to taxes. Look into the benefits of having an S corporation. So look into those details to see if that's gonna work best for you. Make sure you are in good standing with your county. 
So when it comes to getting any types of grants, business grants that they're offering, you wanna make sure that everything that your county needs in terms of your business licenses is good to go so that, so that you are qualified for those grants when you apply. Start off by asking family and friends to help you with your balloon business. You don't want to hire an employee within the first year or so of having your business. You would rather have free help, to be honest, from people that want to support you because, you know, having a business is risky and you got to make sure you're making money before you start paying people. Also look into having contractors. So TaskRabbit, the app that I had told you guys about in a previous video is so very helpful for finding people that can do like one-off jobs. You have a setup at a hotel on Thursday. Hey, okay, I'm gonna need some extra hands. You're gonna look on TaskRabbit and hire somebody with high reviews to meet you at that hotel and help you. Or, hey, I need help managing these emails. You're gonna hire somebody on TaskRabbit to assist you with the emails. There's people for everything. Data entry, decorations. If you need something welded, there's people for everything on TaskRabbit. So to start off, you're most likely gonna need U-Haul sometimes for your large deliveries. And U-Haul is great. They do have business accounts that can save you some money, but you do wanna have a game plan to shift to getting your own cargo van. So my cargo van I actually got from an auction and it saved me a lot of money. I spent a lot of money with U-Haul and having my cargo van and paying that on a monthly basis is way cheaper than what I was paying to U-Haul. So once you get to a point in which you are making enough money and getting enough orders, you want to start looking into getting your own vehicle. Get magnets on your cargo van. So getting your vehicle wrapped can cost what? $3,500 and above. But you can go to like Vistaprint, use a coupon on Retail Me Not, put your logo on it and your number, stick the magnet onto your cargo van, and you'll actually get clients from driving around with those magnets on. So that's been my experience. So I would definitely recommend those magnets for your cargo van. Set specific hours for delivery and setup. So I remember in the very beginning, I would be doing takedowns for like weddings at 11 p.m. at night. And that was burning me out. You need to have boundaries. You need to have specific um, times that you can come back for a takedown or hey, that's actually after hours for me to do takedown, but is there a possibility that I can come the following day to do takedown during regular hours. Set boundaries, people, so that you don't burn out. If we could rewind, I would recommend that when you're choosing your name for your balloon business, you choose something that if you were to talk to a neighbor and say, hey, I have a business, the name of the business is Upscale Balloons that person would be able to easily spell out the name so that they can find you. If you have a business name that's hard for people to spell, it's gonna make it harder for people to find you. So make it easy for them. Getting your website built. So, you know, having a more modern and trendy website is going to put you far ahead of competition because a lot of balloon businesses are still sticking to like a old fashioned website with spiral balloon arches and columns on their homepage. And that's not the trend. So put your beautiful balloon garlands and balloon decorations that are trendy and modern and do a website that is fancier than your competitors. And it will definitely put you ahead of the game. So to start, I was getting my helium tank from Robert's Oxygen. And first I started off renting their tanks. And they had like these like weird extra fees that came along with renting their tanks that would really make it super expensive. So then I noticed that if I was to buy a helium tank, I could actually save money on those random fees because those random fees disappeared once you owned your own tank. So to start, I would start off by investing in buying your own helium tank, 
and not renting because those fees do add up. I hope this random information was helpful for you. I can't wait to hear about the growth of your balloon businesses. It's game time. Please subscribe to the channel. Please like, please comment. Please tell me if you learned anything new. If you have any questions, let me know and I will definitely make sure to respond to you below. Until next time, good people.